There's been a lot of talk about who really wins in Battlefield 6 out of AMD and Intel, and while the 9800X 3D might seem like the obvious victor here for many of you, there are those that claim the 1400K is just as fast, and some even go as far as to say it's faster, which does seem like a crazy claim given that the 9800X 3D proved to be 18% faster across a massive range of games when we last looked at the two, but there were a few select titles where the 1400K actually ends up faster. So you could take your chances on that one, but you know what you don't have to take your chances on. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Be Quiet and their Pure Power 13M Power Supply Series, available in either 550, 650, 750, 850, or 1000 watt capacities. The Pure Power 13M is an ATX 3.1 compliant and PCIe 5.1 compliant power supply with semi passive cooling and one massive 12 volt rail. All models include native integration of both the 12 volt high power connector as well as four PCIe 6 plus 2 pin connectors for support for current and previous generation GPUs. All models are fully modular, meaning you only need to install the cables you'll be using, making installation quick and tidy. Also, for that peace of mind, they're backed by a 10 year warranty, so for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so for testing, I'm using the exact same method as the previous Battlefield 6 videos, and that means I'll be benchmarking the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and Core i9 14900K simultaneously. So the benchmark passes were recorded in the same match at the same time, with both systems doing pretty much the exact same thing. As for the test system configurations, they're all stock, but with memory profiles loaded. That means that the 9800X 3D is using DDR5 6000 CL30 memory as it's the most optimal configuration in terms of price and performance. Sure, DDR5 8000 might be a few percent faster in some games, but it costs a lot more and doesn't always work as I've found when testing a wide range of AM5 motherboards. Then we have the Core i9 14900K, which has been tested on the ASUS ROG Maximus Z690 Hero using the latest BIOS and we're running the extreme profile, not the performance profile. I'm also using DDR5 7200 CL34 memory. So this is about the best out of the box configuration you can get for this processor. I do have a few G-Skill XMP8000 kits, but they all crashed when trying to play Battlefield 6. So they would require additional tuning or my 14900K silicon just isn't that good. Having said that though, Pro Overclocker Buildzoid has claimed that most 14900K chips won't be 100% stable when using DDR5-8000 memory on most motherboards, and that certainly has been my experience to date, and I've even found that my 7200 kit will crash on some motherboards. Anyway, this is a stock comparison using what I believe to be optimal memory configurations. Then for the graphics card, both systems are of course fitted with a GeForce RTX 5090, and because this is strictly a CPU benchmark, all testing takes place at 1080p. But if you're a gamer and you don't understand why 1440p and 4K CPU testing isn't included, we have a lot of videos that explain why. So I suppose go watch them. Don't bother leaving a comment that makes you look like a noob. Just move on. It's easier for everyone. Just remember, GPU limited CPU testing is super dumb. This isn't a system benchmark, it is a CPU benchmark. Okay, annoying disclaimer that I wish I didn't have to give out of the way. Let's get into it. Starting off, we jumped into a conquest match on the Liberation Peak map using the low preset at 1080p. Early on in our benchmark, as the players were deploying to the battlefield, the 9800X 3D's average frame rate was 42% higher with 32% greater 1% lows, so a massive performance difference there. After around a minute of gameplay and getting well into the action, the margins didn't change too much. The 9800X 3D was still 41% faster for the average frame rate with 33% stronger 1% lows. And we're talking about 226 FPS versus 316 FPS after just over a minute and a half of testing. So let's try another map. Next we have Iberian Offensive, again at 1080p with the low settings. And early on in this test, the 9800X 3D was 34% faster for the average frame rate, 19% faster when looking at the 1% lows. So the margins are reduced on this map, at least towards the start of the test. After just over two minutes of fighting, we end up with a 34% margin in favor of the 9800X 3D and 21% stronger 1% lows. 
So basically the same margins seen at the start of the test. Now for the Empire State map, and this test takes place after several minutes of gameplay, and here the 9800X3D is seen to be 26% faster for the average frame rate, but just 4% faster for the 1% lows. So the results are much closer here. Then after a few more minutes of fighting, we see the same 26% margin for the average frame rate, favoring the 9800X3D, but just a 6% margin for the 1% lows. Then finally, we have the Siege of Cairo map, and this test ran for just over three minutes. Towards the start of the test, the 9800X3D was 34% faster when looking at the average frame rate, and this time the 1% lows were improved by 27%. Of course, frame time performance was excellent for both systems, so although the Ryzen processor was much faster, the experience using the 14900K was great, though as expected, the Intel CPU did consume considerably more power, just over 120 watts more, which is a bit funny given the 9800X3D didn't even consume 100 watts, making the Intel CPU 135% more power hungry. Anyway, if we once again fast forward to the end of the test, we see that after three minutes of fighting, the 9800X3D is 35% faster for the average frame rate and 20% faster when comparing 1% lows. So I think it's time to increase the quality settings and we'll run all the tests again. Once again, we'll start with the Liberation Peak map, this time using the Ultra preset at 1080p. So far, little appears to have changed here. Obviously using the low settings, the 9800X3D was 41% faster. Here we're seeing the exact same margin with a 25% boost to the 1% lows. The margins did shrink a little bit by the end of the test. Here the 9800X3D wound up delivering a 33% greater average frame rate and 19% stronger 1% lows. So still a very convincing win for AMD, but this map did provide the largest margins in the previous testing. So let's move on. We're back at the Iberian Offensive, this time with the Ultra settings, and here the 9800X3D was 30% faster when comparing the average frame rate, but just 5% faster for the 1% lows. That said, as the testing progressed, the margin quickly grew, and while we're still seeing the same 30% margin for the average frame rate, the 1% lows have now blown out to a 21% margin. Then after a little over 2 minutes of fighting, we end up with a 21% margin favouring the average frame rate for the 9800X3D, with just an 11% margin seen when looking at the 1% lows. Now we're back on the Empire State map, but this time with the Ultra settings, and it's another clear win for the 9800X3D, delivering a 31% stronger average frame rate at the start of our test, with a more mild 13% boost for the 1% lows. Then, after a few minutes of gameplay, the 9800X3D wound up 24% faster for the average frame rate, and just 12% faster for the 1% lows. So much closer margins in this test, but still, over a 20% greater average frame rate is a significant result. Then finally, we're back at the Siege of Cairo map, this time testing with the Ultra settings, and at the start of this test, the 9800X3D is seen to be 22% faster for the average frame rate, and 11% faster when looking at the 1% lows. So similar results to what we've seen on the previous few maps. Then ending this test, the 9800X3D was 24% faster for the average frame rate, with just an 8% increase for the 1% lows. Now before wrapping up the testing, here are some good old fashioned blue bar graphs that quickly and clearly illustrate the performance difference between these two processors in Battlefield 6. As you can see, Liberation Peak is the least demanding map, and it's here that the 9800X3D enjoys the largest win over the 14900K, delivering a 41% greater average frame rate. Then we're looking at a 34% margin on Iberian Offensive, 26% for Empire State, and 35% for Siege of Cairo. Then switching to the Ultra preset generally saw much closer 1% low performance, with the 9800X3D typically around 11% faster, with typically 22% greater average frame rate performance. So there you have it, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D is without question the faster CPU for playing Battlefield 6, and it's without question the most efficient by a mile. In this testing, it was often 20 to 30% faster than the 14900K, and yet the Core i9 processor was consistently seen consuming around 130% more power, which was around 120 watt increase. That's an insane difference for the CPU. Now, at the start of this video, I mentioned that there has been quite a bit of talk about which CPU is the fastest for Battlefield 6. So let's discuss that. About two weeks ago now, a streamer with early access to the game reported that his 9800X3D system 
was around 30% faster than his friend's 14900K system, both using the same RTX 5080 at 1440p, and I assume they were using competitive quality settings. Naturally, some Intel fans, I wanna say fanboys, well I just did, but <laughs> Intel fans, and in particular those who like to tune their 14900Ks, uh, they didn't want to accept that their very fast CPU, which they should be happy with because it is a very fast CPU, but it is now clearly inferior to the newer 9800X 3D. But you know they have to maintain that illusion that their 14900K is outright the best. So naturally they went and slandered the innocent streamer who was just reporting on what he was seeing. He didn't really care. Like he wasn't an AMD fanboy or an Intel fanboy. He was just a gamer. Imagine that, someone who plays games and enjoys them. It's crazy stuff. So he was just reporting what he was seeing on his system opposed to his friend's system and some news uh, outlets, media outlets, whatnot, picked up on the story and they also got attacked in the process for spreading apparent misinformation. Most of the hate as usual comes from the, I don't want to say overclocking community because that's really unfair on the overclocking community, but you, you guys will have seen it on X and Reddit, the guys that tune their systems and are way smarter than you and just know what special source to use to get unbelievable performance. It's kind of like the you're holding it wrong meme, but now it's the you're not tuning it correctly meme, I suppose. Anyway, something along those lines. Now, the thing is most streamers and even gamers for that matter, they don't want to spend countless hours online working out how to tune their 14900K processor to get the most out of it. And really more importantly, they'd probably be doing a lot of memory tuning. Not a lot of fun, that stuff. And really, it's just to get a little bit of extra performance at the risk of system stability. So with most gamers not really wanting to spend hours tinkering with memory timings to maximize their performance and do so at the risk of stability, the done thing is to build a system or buy a system, hopefully load a memory profile, and then get gaming. It's pretty crazy, I know, just gaming on a gaming PC, but that's what some people or most people apparently like to do. And this is exactly what these guys have done. And when you do that, the 9800X 3D ends up much faster, around 30% faster, just as these guys reported a few weeks ago now. Of course, I have no problem with overclocking and look, you can harp on about the tune settings all you like. And I think providing that information in addition to stock performance is fine, but claiming that you've vetted the max overclock for a 9800X 3D, and then you've done the same for the 1400K without showing any stock performance at all, it's highly dubious at best. Personally, I don't want to be the one to validate any overclock as it's impossible to know if the results will be achieved using someone else's hardware. After all, silicon quality is a thing. So it's now pretty well established that stock, the 9800X 3D is around 30% faster than the 1400K, especially when using lower quality settings. And that is a 1400K using generously clocked memory. It's not DDR5 6000 versus 6000. So I think this is the baseline and I have seen multiple trusted outlets now reporting very similar margins. And of course, it's exactly what we've found through extensive testing across four conquest maps using the low and ultra presets. That being the case, anyone who claims their 14900K is as fast or faster than the 9800X 3D for Battlefield 6, they're basically telling you that their overclock slash tune is good for about a 30% boost while they were unable to extract any additional performance out of the 9800X 3D. How likely does that seem to you? And not very, I hope. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, subscribe. We do have some more Battlefield 6 content coming up. I have a really in-depth look at six core versus eight core processors in the game. Some really interesting results there. So that'll be worth subscribing and checking out when we drop that video in a few days time. Also, we have Patreon or the join button. Um, either one of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.